is Caitlin Tillman, and today we're going to talk about getting started with the clarinet. In this video, we will talk about how to put your clarinet together, how to make the first sounds, and some supplies that you'll need along with learning the clarinet. Are you ready? Let's get started. So the first thing is when you open your clarinet case, make sure it's flat because if you open it like this, it could fall. And the clarinet is a very fragile instrument. The keys bend and break very easily, so be careful when opening it. So once you open your clarinet, we're gonna talk about the different pieces. This is the bottom of the clarinet, and we call it the bell. It kinda looks like a bell, okay? The next one, you'll see two long pieces with keys. You're gonna take the bigger one, okay? And it should twist right in. Now, if you have the wrong one, it'll just go right in and it won't it won't stay there. It'll be too too small. So we're going to take that bigger one and we're just going to twist it in. Now here, if you're trying really hard to twist in the clarinet and it's not going in, you'll need something that we call cork grease, which kind of usually looks like a little chapstick tube, something like this. Okay. And this is especially common for new clarinets is to need cork grease. So what you do is you'll take a little bit of your cork grease, rub some on your finger, and then you'll rub it in. You might need to do this a few times if the clarinet is new. Okay, so it might you might have to do it the first few times to put it together. You won't have to do it every time. Once it starts going in nice and easily, kind of like this, then you're good to go. Okay, so you wanna twist that in so it's all the way twisted. Be careful when you're twisting in the parts of the clarinet that you're not putting a lot of pressure on the keys because they can bend very easily. So this part is called the lower joint or lower section of the clarinet. Okay. The next part is the other part that looks like it and it has two corks, one on the bottom, one on the top. The lower joint just has the bottom cork. So now we're going to look at the part that has the two corks. All right, and again, you might need to grease those if your clarinet is new. Now this part, you gotta be really careful, so pay attention here. When you're twisting in the upper joint or upper section to the lower section, we wanna make sure that this key right here, it's called the bridge key because it kind of bridges over the two sections and connects. We gotta make sure that it comes up. So what I'm doing is I'm pushing down these ring keys up here to, to make it move, okay? The reason why is if you don't do that, when you put it together, it could smash against the other key and bend or break. So again, lift that bridge key. You can see it moving a little bit right, right there. Okay, so once, that, once you push down on those keys and that pops up, you're gonna twist it in. Okay, and it should line up. Let me do it this way so you can see. This part on the lower joint and that bridge key are gonna line up like you connected the bridge, okay? And then if you look at the at the holes or, or these keys here, they kind of all line up down the center. All right, so bell, lower section, upper section. The next part of the clarinet we're gonna put together is called the barrel, because it looks like a barrel. And that just, goes right on top there. Okay, just like that. And then we have the mouthpiece. Okay, the mouthpiece has a few different parts, so let's talk about the mouthpiece. So here's the mouthpiece, looks something like this. Okay, and then you'll also have this fancy, a lot of them are metal, some of them are cloth, whatever you have, this fancy thing called a ligature. The ligature is what's gonna hold on the reed, which we're gonna talk about in just a second. So I'm gonna leave my reed off for now. I'm gonna twist the mouthpiece into the barrel. Okay, here's something that's important to know. The open part of the mouthpiece where the hole is, is gonna face towards you. Now I did this wrong the first time I ever put a clamp together. I thought, oh, it looks like a recorder. It should face out but that's not the case. The recorder is, is kind of backwards from the actual clarinet. So the whole face is towards you, okay? Then you're gonna take your reed. Now the reed is the piece of wood that when you blow into the clarinet, it vibrates to make a sound. 
So it looks something like this, okay? And we'll talk more about reeds at the end. Reeds are very, very important and very fragile. Without a reed, you get no sound. If there are any cracks or chips or it's bent at all, it's no good. So it's gotta be perfectly straight. Therefore, you probably don't ever want to touch the reed at the tip because it can snap very easily. So I always grab the reed from the thick end at the bottom, okay? Now get your reed wet. If it's a brand new reed, you might wanna put it in a cup of water for a minute or so, um, or you can just suck on it, okay? Make sure you get it wet. I like to get it wet on both sides. Then what you're gonna do with the reed to put it on is it's gonna sit on the mouthpiece with the hole. So the flat part of the reed, as you can see, the reed kind of goes out. The flat edge is gonna go face down on the mouthpiece. And it doesn't go in the hole. You don't need to slide it in at all. It just basically sits right there, okay? Now I'm gonna line it up so that it covers, you're gonna see about a small crescent or a moon shape part of the mouthpiece above the reed. The mouthpiece is higher than the reed. So it sits right like that, nice and straight. I'm holding it there with my finger so it doesn't go anywhere. All right. And then what I'm gonna do is take my ligature, okay? But you'll notice if you look at the ligature, there's a part that's wider. The wider part goes down first. Okay, and if it doesn't go down, you just loosen the screw. It'll go about halfway down and go past the slanted part there. Make sure my reed is adjusted so that it looks like that. Okay, and then I'm gonna twist the screw just enough to tighten it. Don't overdo it because you don't wanna crack your reed. Okay, so then the reed will stay there. Now, if you, if it, if you hit the side and it moves at all, then it's probably not on tight enough. Okay, so that's the clarinet. That's how we put it together, all set up. So just a review, mouthpiece, ligature, holds the reed, the reed, barrel, upper joint, lower joint, bell, and these we call keys. That's the clarinet. Now let's make a sound. There are a few important details before making your first sound. When you're making your first sound, again, make sure your reed is moist. It needs to be wet, whether you put it in a cup of water or you just suck on it for a minute. It has to be wet or it's not gonna vibrate and get the sound that we want. Another thing about reeds, we talked about make sure there's no chips or cracks in them because that will affect your sound as well. And make sure that you have a proper size reed. So there's different sizes of reeds. Typically, the smaller the reed, the easier it is to get started. So if you're a beginner, you might want to start with a size two, um, possibly a one and a half. If you have a two and a half, that might be okay. Um, usually younger kids, it's a little bit better if they have a two starting out, okay? So you can find a box of reeds. There are all different sizes and different brands of reeds that you can get. Uh, typically, there, there's a, so many different kind of brands out there, but some good starter ones are Rico, Mitchell Lurie, Juno, some of those are good to start off with. And you can find any of those at your local music store or on Amazon. Okay, so once you have your reed and your clarinet set up, now I wanna talk about the first sound. Posture is really important. We wanna make sure we're sitting up nice and tall, feet flat on the floor, okay? And here's a really big one. We wanna make sure the head is always straight. So you never wanna look down. You don't need to look at the clarinet when you're playing. If your neck is down, you're cutting off your air support, and you're gonna have trouble getting out a good sound because you need a lot of air to play the clarinet. Imagine that you're blowing air and it has to travel all the way through the clarinet to get out. So if you just go just a little bit of air, you're not gonna get enough sound. So that air has to be pushed all the way through. Okay, I'm gonna turn to the side here because I want you to see what I'm doing with my mouth next. In music, we refer to our mouth as our embouchure. It's a fancy French word, and that just means what's going on up here, the muscles, the mouth, everything, okay? So for the position of the mouth, your bottom lip kind of sits just over your bottom teeth so that when you push it against the clarinet, your bottom teeth, this is important, bottom teeth never touch the reed. Teeth never touch the reed, okay? 
your top teeth are going to sit about halfway down the slanted part of the mouthpiece. So you're just going to rest your teeth right about there on the mouthpiece, rest your teeth there, and then your mouth is going to close over it. Okay. So I wet my reed. Bottom lip is on. Bottom lip is pressed against the reed there. Okay. My top teeth are going to just rest on it. Then I close my mouth. Okay. Like that. The next step is just to blow. Now I like to say in the beginning, any sound is a good sound. So you might get a squeak. You might get some really weird sounds. That's okay. Any sound is a good sound to start off. I'm not even pushing down anything. Okay. Now I, I should have mentioned before, but how to actually hold the clarinet at this point, you might be holding it like this or like this, you know, let's talk about where the hands actually go. Don't have to worry about pushing down any keys yet. Your right hand thumb is going to go. This is called a thumb rest. Your thumb goes under the thumb rest. And what that does is it helps us balance it. So it kind of gives us a little bit of a handle on holding it. Okay. So right thumb goes there. We'll talk about the fingers later. And then your left hand, it's important that we get the left hand on top. I've seen students learn it backwards and then pretty soon you'll find out it's not going to work for very long. So left hand on top and the thumb is going to rest over, over this hole here. Kind of like that. Okay. Your wrist should be really relaxed. If you're trying to put your thumb in a certain position and, and then your hand goes out here, you know, it can get awkward. You should never have your wrist twisted. It should be nice and relaxed. So put your hands in a position where it's nice and comfortable and your fingers will naturally fall over, over these holes, over these keys. Okay. Your elbows are going to be up a little bit, not out, but not in either. Okay. And the bell of the clarinet is probably going to come out to about the level of your knees, maybe just a little bit further out away from your knees. Okay. So that's how we're going to hold it. Again, don't worry about pushing down the keys. Generally, the on the left hand, it goes one over the ring. Now this one here doesn't have a ring, so it just goes over that hole. One, two, three. Right hand, one, two, three. Just follow the rings. Okay. Pinkies just kind of rest there. Now, if your pinkies don't hit these other keys just naturally, then you probably have your hands flipped because then where's the pinky going to go? So again, don't worry about playing all those notes yet. That's not in this video. We're just learning how to get that first step. Okay. So now you know your right hand there, left hand on top, lip, teeth, close the mouth and then blow and just get a sound out like that to start okay if you're not getting any sound out make sure your reed is nice and wet make sure you use a lot more air okay and that'll be a good way to get started it takes time you might get a sound out for a second and then lose it just keep practicing for about a week or two just getting out that first sound okay try not to puff out your cheeks we'll talk about that and more sounds in the next video you don't want that Think of it more like you're, you're cooling down soup. So the cheeks are in. Okay. All right. So that's how you can get started with the first sound. Now, the next thing I want to talk to you about is some materials that you're going to need to go along with learning the clarinet. Okay. So a few things that you're going to need. You will need reeds. And get a box of reeds. I have a 10 count box. They do have some where you can buy single reeds or a pack of three. Uh, I usually recommend starting with a 10 uh, or pretty much always getting a 10 box, 10 count box, because again, once it breaks, it's gone, it's useless. And you'll get a better deal if you buy a, a bigger box. In the beginning, you might go through reeds more as you're learning how to handle them. You notice that they snap. Sometimes you're tooth will chip a reed, so it's good to have enough reeds. You never want to run out of those. Okay. Now your reeds, like I said, they can, they can be expensive. If you're going through a reed every single day, 
you know, that's, that's a couple bucks each at least. So uh, you'll want to keep them safe. So I have a reed case. This one actually holds 10 reeds, but they have ones that hold two or four little single reed cases. I recommend having the four count one at least, uh, because what you'll want is you'll want to have probably two to three reeds at a time um, that are ready to go or that you're working on. And if you alternate reeds uh, each time you play, the reeds actually last longer. And then if you break one, you have a backup ready to go in your reed case. So it's good to have a few reeds. Uh, another thing about reeds is they're kind of like breaking in new shoes. They don't always start off, you know, ready to go. Sometimes a new reed is harder to get a sound out of. So that's why I said if you practice for like a week, just keep working on that reed. It's going to get easier and then you'll be able to get the sound out easier. So in my reed case, I have one on my clarinet and then I have three more right here. So I have some backups in case something happens to this reed. These ones are ready to go. Okay, so again, um, I recommend at least a four count read case. Okay, so that's important. Oh, and when you're putting your read in the case, let's talk about that. That flat part, the back that has the writing on it is going to slide in just enough to where it's not going to fall out. Don't force it in because they can get stuck. Okay, this is going to keep the moisture out of the reeds. It's going to keep them flat so they don't bend. If you leave it on your mouthpiece, it might bend or break. Um, it could also get moldy if you leave it on the, on the mouthpiece. So typically it's safer to have it in this. Now you might notice that your reed comes with this little plastic case. Those ones work, but they also can bend your reed. They will bend it because it'll start to shape towards that reed case and then it doesn't last as long if it starts to bend. So that it's safer to spend maybe $5 on Amazon to get one of those little reed cases. Okay, some other things you'll need besides reeds in a reed case. We talked about the cork grease, okay? And I also recommend a cleaning kit. Now there's different types of cleaning kits. There are ones that have this swab with a string and the rod goes down, it's a little metal weight and you slide, as you take it apart, you slide the rod down the clarinet, pull it out, and then it cleans it that way, okay? Um, there are also ones that are long, fuzzy, kind of kind of like this, but longer, okay? And this um, can swab out the clarinet as well. The standard one is usually the one with the weight. And you'll want to swipe it through the clarinet a few times to clean it out. This one right here is actually just for cleaning the mouthpiece. So once you're all done, you take off your reed, you put the reed in its case, and then you can swab with your little mouthpiece swab. Um, that's another way to, to clean that out. So I also recommend just going online and getting a standard clarinet cleaning kit to have it all ready to go. And a lot of times they'll come with the cork grease uh, and everything you need. Something that's optional, um, completely optional. I have these, I put these little rubber stickers on the back. Makes it a little bit softer on your teeth, especially if you have braces, this can make it a huge difference. It also protects the mouthpiece from getting teeth marks on it. So, um, and every time, every once in a while, maybe every couple months, I'll take it off, clean it, and put a new one on. So those, um, those are just mouthpiece stickers. All this you can find at a music store or online. Amazon is great for those as well. The last thing I want to mention is if you're looking where to get a clarinet or trying to decide what clarinet is the best clarinet for you, here's some tips. If you're going to get a used one, I recommend going to a music store specifically. If you try to get them off one of these apps where you can buy them, I've seen students buy ones that are completely unplayable unless you know someone who can check it out and verify it for you. Amazon has some cheaper instruments to start off, like Mendini is one of them, um, and you might spend like 80 bucks. And those clarinets, even though they are cheaper quality, they tend to last for the first year pretty well if you take care of it. So it's a good way to get started to test it out, and it's cheaper than renting. I recommend to my students, you might spend you know $20 a month or more renting a clarinet, for a year versus buying one for, you know, 80 bucks or whatever the price fluctuates on Amazon. And then um, at the end you own it, it, you spend less money. And even if it lasts a year, it's cheaper than renting. 
Again, it's not the best quality. It's not going to last you for years and years, most likely, but it'll help get you started. So that's a great way to get started. If you're looking for a more professional, long-lasting clarinet, um, some good brands. Yamaha is, is a good kind of, I'd say, beginner um, quality one. Um, the Paris buffets are really good. Um, and there's, there's a few others. So you can message me if you have questions on tr trying to find the perfect instrument for you. But uh, those Amazon ones are great for starting out just for that, that trial period. Okay, so if you have any questions, uh, feel free to reach out to me. But I hope you got something from this video regarding getting started on the clarinet. And I'll be making some more videos where we actually get to start playing. All right, thanks for watching.